on Company Three. It might be no, Company no, no, Four. No, no, no. I'm on Company Forty Three. See, I had okay. a whole lot of ones that, that belly flop. Okay, talk, talk about, about it. Talk about that. The belly flop. Yeah. Oh baby, just First the, give flop. us give us the high level. I'm, I mean, because it's right. always there's so much lessons in that, right? Because because oh, yeah. that is you you're just tenacious, man. You just keep going. You don't stop. This brother got more energy. You got more energy than anybody I know, man. I mean, I've never seen you down. You are you are moving. Everything is fast. Yeah. I mean, you got all the energy. I don't know what kind of B12 shots you got, but it's amazing. Hey, I'm high on life, baby. That's it. That's Gotta it. Gotta get to it, man. Absolutely. Gotta get to it. Um, so the first belly flop that was uh, that impacted me significantly was I was in school. I was at okay. FAM. I'm in my fifth year of a five-year MBA program. And I ended up going to, um, before that year, I went to uh, Amsterdam. Okay. And so, you know, I'm in Amsterdam in the coffee shops. Right. Understood. I'm drinking a lot of coffee. They know Absolutely. For coffee. Yeah, great, right. great espresso in Amsterdam. I'm all a big of that. fan. I'm Different a big flavors fan. of coffee. So yeah. I'm in there drinking all the coffee they got. <laughs> I'm coming out of there and for some reason I'm hungry. Huh. And they have these coffee does do that. It does that. Sometimes it does. <laughs> <laughs> Generates an appetite. So I'm at so right outside the coffee, the coffee uh, the coffee shop, they have these uh, little carts with fries. They call them palm frits. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had them. You're a traveler. You've been there 30 times. So the fries in the cone okay, with the different toppings. So mayonnaise, you know, curry, onions, all the kind of cool stuff. So I'm loving it. So I'm <laughs> thinking, okay, bet. I'm about to go back to the U.S. I'm about to bring this fry in the cone concept. And I'll be the next Tommy. I'm going to be next Mickey D's. Tommy D's, the next Mickey D's. I love it, though. <laughs> and that's what I decided to do. So I come back. My mother helps me, uh, supports me. I go get a loan from SunTrust Bank in Atlanta. And this is right after college? In college. In college, okay. beginning of my, my fifth year, my last okay, year. Okay, got it, got yeah, it. In my fifth year. So she helps me, so I get a loan. Um, I mean, she puts assets up, but I get the loan. I get a, uh, you know, a lease right on Tennessee Street, which is the main drag in okay. Tallahassee. It's like the first black business on Tennessee Street. Wow. This is, this is 2002. Okay. And uh, so anyway, and I get this thing, and, and long story short, at first it was going to be called the Internationally Famous Fry World. Before you, you know it, my ego took over, or people got in my ear, whatever, and I turned it into Tommy D's. <laughs> and when I left it being it's got a, a ring Fry to World, it though. Huh? it's got a ring to it. It does, have, it may yeah. come back, it may come <laughs> back. Um, but when I got away from Fry World, I kind of lost what it was. Okay. So I started adding different, so I went to, you know, kebabs because i want to do something different than just a you know sandwich then i started doing jamaican jerk caribbean foods i'm in, you know i was in florida you know you can't mess with no jamaican though you got to do that right yeah i was doing it wrong and then you know then i was selling a little champagne flutes it was just a disaster it, it turned out to be a, i was doing fried shrimp <laughs> it was just a smorgasbord of disasterness and then even my fries ended up being bad right oh wow okay because i got lost in the sauce so I was there, and I did finish my, you know, I finished my, my MBA, five years. I was 3.8, so I did well uh, academically. But I felt stuck in this business, and I okay. realized I loved the output of the business, if I could go there in terms of the fries, but I hated the operations of the business. I didn't okay. like the business. Okay. I hated it. I mean, I absolutely hated it. Just the food service in general, just the restaurant I, business. I just hated it. Okay. And, uh, but I grew it fast. Right. Okay. So I end up I was on this by Florida State's campus on the street, but then I end up in the mall and up in the airport. So I was 22. I was actually a, a concessionaire in Tallahassee Airport. And how do I do that? I did that, Keenan, because this is a black company, one of the largest black owned con concessionaires in the okay. country at the time named Thompson Hospitality. OK. Dude named Warren Thompson. So this big bid comes up for who's going to run the concessions in Tallahassee Airport. So Thompson, Thompson Hospitality bids on it. This brother, who was about maybe 10 years older than me at the time, comes down, and he's running the, the business development from D.C. He meets me. He's like, man, I want to put you as my partner, as our subcontractor, minority partner, in this airport deal. And Got we'll do it. a Tommy D's and whatever. So they were the prime, and then you I would be the, be the sub, sub to fill the diversity component of it. Right. Even Got though they were black-owned, but still. Okay. But here's what happens, O'Keen. They lose. But meanwhile, 
the dude who I was in freshman year uh, dorm room with, not dorm room, but dorm, the same dorm. Yep. Not the same room, same dorm. Is uh, Andrew Gillum. <laughs> so Andrew, so same time I'm opening Tommy D's, Andrew's running for city councilman. Got it. And he became the youngest elected official in the state of Florida. Mm. He's always been true. He was the SBA president. Yeah. Always true to it. Yeah. So then at Tommy D's, when I would give anyone a to-go order, I would put his flyer in my bag when he was running. I actually invested real money into his campaign. I grew up in this thing. I'm trying yeah. to help the brother out with the same age and, and the whole piece. So he wins city councilman, right? Times and Hospitality loses the bid to a company called Creative Host Services. Well, oh, and by the way, my attorney who helped me with the lease before he became mayor, he helped me with my lease for my, uh, my first time he did on the street, became mayor, so he's mayor, and then <laughs> Andrew is city council. So then they said, we like creative hosts, however, we don't like their sub, we prefer Tommy D's. Wow. And that's how I got in the airport when I was 22. You are a political whisperer. Huh? I mean, you just, you were right by all the politicians. Yeah, I was, well. But yeah, but. It just with, happened since. But with the attorney, you know what I'm saying? I did what I was supposed to do. I was make sure he was paid on time. With Andrew, I performed yeah. first, right? Yeah. I was always, always flyers out, putting the money in. I was the first uh, person, one of the first people to, to I almost used to use the wrong word and said invest, not investing. Yeah. Contributing yes. to his uh, gubernatorial campaign. It's always interesting. I mean, I was always taught that that the, uh, the work comes first. Yeah. It's always the work before the money. And I think sometimes we get confused on that, especially when we're dealing with employees. They, they expect that the money comes first. Right. Uh, but that's not an entrepreneurial trait. No. You work first every right. time. So now the you, you hated the business. So talk about what, what happened. Did you sell it? Did you did you did it fold? What what tell happened? You what happened? So what happened was I folded like a folding chair. <laughs> I curled up and begged to get out of all of it. Okay. So I negotiated with the, um, with the mall to break my lease. Okay. I negotiated to, to get rid of my lease on the street location. And in the airport, I was just getting paid kind of a license fee, so it didn't matter. Okay. It wasn't a whole lot of money anyway, but I was in there. And then, I, you know, my mother let me come home. So the truth is, when I went, in, and so even I did well in school, I didn't prepare for a job after school. Got it. I thought I was going to be some super trillionaire. Yeah. So I would never need a job. So I didn't take, I didn't take seriously the internships, the relationships, yeah. so that when I graduated, I was ready to go. I didn't do those things. Instead, I was spoiled, and that's how I operated. So this business didn't actually fail, though. You just didn't like it. You actually it did well. <laughs> no, nah, it failed. The it, business it, scaled. You had one location. You go to three. Yeah, this is one of those perfect interview answers. It's like, you know, tell me something that you did really bad, and it's, it ends up being great. No, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible, it's a, terrible, terrible, it's a, terrible. This is a great story. It may be a good story, but, Keenan, it was a failure. It was failure because of the way I looked at it, no matter what. I, let me tell you something. I curled up. I took my spoiled ass home to Detroit because so I didn't have my shit figured out like I should have. Okay. And my mother, because she had, she was my, uh, you know, my, uh, she helped me, right? So yeah. she, uh, she took care of me. Mama's boy, she gave me a, you know, a job as senior vice president yeah. at 23 years old. But, you know, from there I learned from that and, and uh, you know, I've performed ever since. 